6 p.m. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan. The news read by Kanuz Ashraf. First, the headlines. Prime Minister says Pakistan attaches great importance to its relations with Saudi Arabia. Foreign Minister at a meeting of Senate Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs in Islamabad has categorically stated that Pakistan will never compromise its national interests. <music> Afghan ambassador to Pakistan has stressed the need for collective efforts to defeat terrorism in both the countries. <music> Amnesty International has launched a drive and online petition for ban on use of pellet gun in Indian Halt Kashmir. UN Secretary General has expressed concerns over US decision to withhold aid of the UN agency mandated to care for Palestinian refugees. In the second test match at Centurion, today South Africa beat India by 135 runs in winning the three match series 2-0. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Shahid Khakan Abbasi says Pakistan attaches great importance to its relations with Saudi Arabia. He was talking to Minister of Commerce and Investment of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Dr. Majid Abdullah al Kasabi, who called on him in Islamabad today. The Prime Minister said the relations between Pakistan and Saudi Arabia are not only important for the government, but the people of Pakistan have a special affection for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Khadim al Harman al Sharifain. The Prime Minister welcomed the holding of 11th session of Pak Saudi Joint Ministerial Commission and expected that it will enhance and strengthen bilateral economic relations. Prime Minister Shahid Hakan Abbasi says the government is working on a multi-pronged strategy to reform the country's tax structure. Sharing some details at Pakistan Economic Forum in Islamabad today, he said the government has planned to lower the tax slabs for the individual tax players. He said minimum threshold of taxable income will also be increased and one-time tax amnesty scheme will also be announced. Shahid Hakan Abbasi said enhancing tax collection is vital to provide incentives and services to the people of the country. He said we need to achieve exports above 50 and 60 billion dollars. Foreign Minister Khwaja Asif has emphatically stated that Pakistan will never make compromise on its national interests. Speaking in the meeting of Senate Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs in Islamabad today, he said Pakistan desires balance in its relations with the United States. He said Pakistan made it clear to the U.S. civil and military leadership that Islamabad does not require any aid, but the U.S. should not blame Pakistan for its own failures. The foreign minister said China has expressed its desire to extend the CPEC to Afghanistan. He said Pakistan also supports the Chinese plan. Minister of State for Finance Rana Mohammad Afzal Khan has said that the government is taking various steps for revival of Sikh industrial units in the country. Responding to a question during the question hour session in the National Assembly today, he said various concessions are available to local manufacturers, including pharmaceutical manufacturers, textile industry, solar sector, aviation, mining, and agro based industries. He said that regulatory duty has also been levied on import of many items. Which which are locally manufactured to encourage the local industry. To a question, he said that a uniform industrial policy has been adopted and there is no discrimination or special treatment with any area of the country. Afghan ambassador to Pakistan, Dr. Omar Zakhilwal, has stressed the need for collective efforts to defeat terrorism in Pakistan and Afghanistan. Addressing a function in Peshawar this afternoon, he said both the countries have been badly damaged due to the ongoing war against terrorism. On this occasion, Dr. Omar Zakhilwal urged the Afghan refugees living in Pakistan to cooperate with the concerned Pakistani authorities for registration and repatriation to Afghanistan. 
Pakistan and Saudi Arabia have agreed to enhance bilateral cooperation in diverse fields. The agreement was reached during the two-day 11th session of Pakistan-Saudi Arabia Joint Ministerial Commission that concluded in Islamabad today. The session was co-chaired by Minister for Commerce and Textile, Mohammad Barwiz Malik, and Minister for Trade and Investment of Saudi Arabia, Dr. Majid bin Abdullah al Kasabi. The two countries agreed to hold exhibitions of new products in each other countries. It was decided that the first single country exhibition of Pakistan in Saudi Arabia will be held in the second half of this year. Both sides will exchange and share security information and the expertise in the field of combating terrorism, organized crimes and money laundering. Chairman Senate Mia Raza Rabbani and Speaker National Assembly Sardar Ayasade called on the Supreme Leader of Iran, Ayatollah Said Al Khamenei, in Tehran. During the meeting, they discussed matters of mutual interest. The Pakistani leaders are in Tehran to participate in the 13th Conference of the Parliamentary Union of the OIC Member States. This is Radio Pakistan. In occupied Kashmir, the joint resistance leadership has issued a protest calendar for the last 10 days of the current month to protest against the massacres perpetrated by Indian Army and paramilitary forces in January 1990. According to Kashmir Media Service, complete shutdown will be observed in Gawakadal area of Srinagar on 21st, Handwara on 25th and Kupwara on 27th of this month. In a joint statement in Srinagar today, Sayyid Ali Gilani, Mirwais Omar Farooq and Muhammad Yasin Malik said the massacres at these places reminds of brutal Indian oppression in the occupied territory. Meanwhile, the global human rights watchdog Amnesty International has launched a postcard campaign and an online petition to press for the ban on the use of pallet guns in occupied Kashmir. The drive is meant to put pressure on India to conduct an independent investigation onto the cases of killings and serious injuries caused by the pallets. The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has expressed deep concern over U.S. decision to withhold more than half of the aid to the United Nations agency mandated to care for Palestinian refugees. Addressing a press conference in New York, he said the services being provided by the UN Relief and Welfare Agency to the Palestinian refugees are of extreme importance. He said Jordan and Lebanon are already under extreme strain for supporting Syrian refugees, and if these countries also suddenly face the burden of having to deal with unfunded services for Palestinian refugees, it will create a very serious problem. Twenty nations have agreed to consider tougher sanctions against North Korea to press it give up the nuclear weapons. The agreement came at a meeting co-hosted by the United States and Canada in Vancouver to discuss ways to increase pressure on Pyongyang. The meeting was attended by the countries that backed South Korea during the 1950-53 war. The European Union has renewed an offer to Brit Britain to stay in the bloc. The offer was made by EU Chief Executive Jan claude Juncker while speaking to the European Parliament in the Strasbourg, France. He said he accepts a share of responsibility for the British referendum vote in 2016 to leave the Union. The Catalan Parliament meets today in the first step toward forming a local government after December's elections. South Africa beat India by 135 runs in the second test match at Centurion today, winning the three-match series 2-0. The score, South Africa 335 and 258, India 307 and 151. South African debutant Lungi Negedi took six wickets for 39 in the second innings and was declared man of the match. And finally, the weather report. Mainly cold and partly cloudy weather is expected in most parts of the country during the next 24 hours. However, light rain but snowfall over the hills is expected at isolated places in Malakan Division, Kashmir and Gilgit, Baltistan. To end the news, some of the headlines once again. Prime Minister says Pakistan attaches great importance to its relations with Saudi Arabia. Foreign Minister at a meeting of Senate Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs in Islamabad has categorically stated that Pakistan will never compromise its national interests. <music> Afghan ambassador to Pakistan has stressed the need for collective efforts to defeat terrorism in both the countries.
And that is the end of this local bullet news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website, radio.gov.pk, and watch live video streaming of our bulletins on the link, facebook.com, Radio Pakistan News Official.